Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro. Now, I always thought that comping was when you blow all of your rent money at the blackjack table so the casino gives you a free hamburger. But apparently, comping is also a technique in recording where you can take multiple vocal takes and compile the best phrases from each one into a Frankenstein together ultimate vocal take. And today, I'm going to give you six simple tips on creating a very fast and efficient comping workflow in Cubase. Let's get into it. Okie dokie folks, so today we're going to be working with just Cubase Pro and Cubase Artist because we're going to need to use the lanes function. If you look here at this track inspector, I can click this button and say show lanes and it'll show all of my takes for this individual vocal performance. Now if you don't have this button, it may just need to be enabled in your track control setting. So right click on the track, hit track control setting and make sure that lane display type is in the visible column, not the hidden column. Then you'll be able to click this button and see all of your takes. Now right now what we're looking at is a comped vocal and you can see I used take 11, take 12, and take 7 to comp together this vocal. So that's three out of the five takes. Now sometimes you may want to use this tutorial to go back into old projects and comp together a vocal that you have sort of butchered up and cut up like this. So in order to do that and to start from square one, I'm going to show you an optional bonus tip. And that's, I know which three takes I want to use, so I will delete this as if I've never comped this together, and I will reinsert this audio. So I'll hit Control P to bring up my audio pool. Next, I'll take the three takes, if you remember that I used, 7, 11, and 12. I'll right click, say Insert into Project, Add Origin. And we'll enter them all onto one track. And here they are. Now the issue is when you re-enter something from the pool, it just shovels them all onto the same lane. So you'll need to put them all onto their own lane. You click on the event and drag it down, but so that you don't get accidental movement, you hold the control key or command on a Mac and it'll find its way into its own lane. So now we have the original audio in place and this is roughly how it will look after you're done recording with nothing done to it. Uh, I think the first step for comping a vocal take is to listen through all of the takes. So what you would do is, you know, set your cursor here, um, solo lane one, solo lane two, and solo lane three, and listen to the whole chorus. Uh, choose which take is your favorite and make sure that one's on top. Uh, if you remember correctly, lead 11 was my favorite, but if lead 12 or lead seven was your favorite, you can just drag it down to the bottom lane and then it'll go to the top. Uh, there's probably another way to make it go to the top, but I'm not sure what that is. So I have lead 11 on top. It doesn't really matter, but I like to have my preferred one on top um, just in case I play through and there's nothing that I need to do. So I remember that I used lead 11 the most and I put that on top. One of the reasons I do that is because if there's um, difficulty deciding which phrase I like more, I will default to the one where I like the whole performance the best because it sort of retains the energy of the original performance. Now, that's step three. Pull your preferred take to the top so that it's uh, the one that is on top and you do that by just manipulating the lanes a bit. The next step, step four, is to make cuts for each phrase. So how do we do that? Well, we zoom in here on the original track. We can hide the lanes for now. And we can use our range selection tool to sort of trim off the beginning. And then I will sort of fade in with the A hotkey. And then I will hit three, which will give me my scissors tool up here in the toolbar. And I'll go through and cut at each specific phrase. Um, and that's why vocals take to comping better than most instruments, although you can comp any instrumental performance as long as there are enough silences where you can squeeze in uh, one phrase in place of the other. And so after we've made all the cuts, we are ready to start using our comp tool. Um, one reason we make all the cuts is because it's easy to comp in a phrase because it's already cut. So if we reopen our lanes, we'll see that we have all three. Now, the next step is to use the comp tool, which is this hand in your toolbar. 
Now, if we go back to the beginning of this, and one reason I make all the cuts is because then we can navigate between events with the keys B and N. B goes to the previous event, N goes to the next event. So here we are at the first event. We can listen to take seven by clicking on take seven, uh, also lane one. So let's listen to it. This part keeps on living. Okay, that's our first take. Here's take 12. This part keeps on living. And finally, take 11. And we hit B to get back to the beginning. This part keeps on living. And after you've heard all three takes, you can just choose one. Now you can go through all of these in that fashion. So we can come down here to... Um, when the others have died When the others have died When the others have died And whatever the last one you select is the one that will be in your edit. Now some people don't like the B and N workflow. They prefer to change their preferences so that the playhead always goes back to where it started last. And you get to that by going to edit preferences. Uh, you click on transport. So there's a lot of, but transport itself. And then you uh, click this little radio box here, return start position to stop. And that's helpful when you're comping a lot because we can watch here. We'll have lead 11 here. We'll play. This part keeps on living. And it goes back to where you started. So some people would prefer this workflow in a comping situation. Um, this part on living. And I think it is probably better for this specific instance, but I always like to, for the playhead to stay where I left it. So I don't use that setting, but I know that a lot of people prefer that setting. So I just navigate with B and N by phrase. Um, and that's tip number five. Uh, tip number six is once you have whichever parts you want, and we can uh, go through and, you know, uh, whatever you're playing, uh, you can choose with the comp tool, whatever take. This part keeps on living when the others have died. When the nights turn so cold, then there's tears in your eyes. Okay, and you can see, like, I didn't have enough uh, time, so if we take off snap, I can make that phrase work. And then you'll be doing a little bit of cleanup, and this is the final tip, um, just sort of making sure that you don't have any overlaps because you'll get some of that. And uh, you know that's that's a matter of just audio editing. Um, but it's helpful to do. And you can also, with this, sort of adjust clip gain. You know, if I chose this, I'm clearly topping out there. Um, and it's probably going to hit the compressor harder than it does on this phrase. So I can actually adjust clip gain so that it sounds um, balanced. When the others have died, when the nights turn so cold, then there's tears in your eyes. So this has been six quick tips on how to comp a vocal take. Um, you're using lanes, you're using the comp tool, you're using the audio pool to pull in the original audio if you want to recomp something. Uh, but here's the six tips. Step number one, use the audio pool to get the original audio. Step number two, listen through all of the individual takes and select one you like the most because Ty will go to the runner on that take. Uh, tip number three, you know, you pull the preferred take so that it's at the top, although that's uh, less important with this workflow, but it is important if you're sort of pulling in clips. Step number four, you make cuts for each phrase in a vocal section. 
Step number five, you A, B each phrase along the lanes using the comp tool, and you can either use the B and N to go back by events or change your edit preferences so that the playhead returns to where it started. And step six, you just adjust clip gain and do your edits to taste, and that is how you comp a vocal take. So this has just been a quick tutorial to teach you guys the basics of vocal comping in Cubase. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace. This part keeps on living when the others have died. When your dreams turn to dust, let this tears